Hello and welcome to Sunday School with Mrs. Aboro. It is the first Sunday of Advent. Yes, we have entered another year in the church's liturgical calendar. I hope it's not too big for us. All this while we have been on year B, now we're into year C, okay? And so the readings are going to be different, kind of. Anyways, all are from the Bible, okay? <laughs> all right. Now, the season of Advent is a time of joyful anticipation and hope, joyful waiting, joyful expectation and hope, okay? Yes, Advent means coming. Huh? So, during the season of Advent, we celebrate the coming of Christ. We think back to his birth in Bethlehem and also look forward to his second coming. And this we have to prepare for. We must be prepared for his second coming. Now, talking about preparation, hmm, how do you prepare for an assessment? That's a test. How do you prepare for a test? Say you're having a test. How do you prepare for it? Hmm? You ensure that your books are in order, isn't it? That your notes are up to date, okay? Right? And then you study for the test and go to the hall with an examination material, isn't it? That's going with your pencil, with your pen, with your ruler, isn't it? That's for those in the primary. But nursery, these things are provided for you, right? Yes, even the secondary, you must prepare. You must ensure your notes are in order. And then you study and go to examination hall with your pen or pencil, your masset, ruler, the things you need to take the test. And if any of these items are not put in place, we may not be successful in the test, right? Now, what if you have a birthday party to attend? How do you prepare? Hmm? You take note of the dates. You get a gift for the celebrant, maybe. Get your clothes ready, ensure that the shoes and the dress or um clothes you're going to put on is all neat and ironed, isn't it? Not that when you bring out the clothes you want to wear or the shoe and you find out that it needs mending. Ah, it won't be nice, isn't it? So you need to prepare for it. So in today's gospel, Jesus tells of things that will happen at the end of time and calls us to be prepared, but not to be afraid. Let us take the gospel reading. We will be reading it this time, okay? All right. Now it is from Luke chapter 21, verses 25 to 28, and then 34 to 36. The first part says, There will be signs in the sun and moon and stars, and on the earth, dismay among nations, in perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves, men fainting from fear and expectation of the things which are coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken, Hmm, these are big anyway, but what this verse is saying that there will be signs, things will be happening, things not natural, so to say, things that one ha uh, um, hasn't seen before will happen. There will be signs up in the sky, you know, nations, uproar, people will be afraid, and then they shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to happen, the Bible says we should look up and know that our reality redemption is nigh. It went further in verse 34 to 36 to say that we should watch okay, ourselves so that we will not be troubled, so that we will um, not um, get into wrong things okay, because of the things that are happening. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the earth. But the Bible says we should stay awake. It therefore means we should be prepared. Okay, we should be alert at all times, praying for God's strength throughout this period. I'm trying to summarize and make them um, clear for you at your level. Okay, but this is the Bible. Okay, children, Jesus is saying that um, we should watch, we should pray, we should be prepared okay now you begin to wonder why we're taking this um why we're taking this reading when we're expecting christ um coming as in wanting to celebrate jesus's birth at christmas well it's just to tell us that christ will come again okay we're only commemorating his birth when he came as a baby and jesus is telling us through his word that he will come the second time this time to take those who have been doing the things that he wants to do yes everything looks scary 
signs in the moon, star, and sky, you know, nations in anguish, that is in pain, on agony. This sounds terrible, doesn't it? Yes, it does. The world falling apart into chaos, everything changing. But after the change, for, um, we hear in the gospel that the Son of Man will come in the clouds with great power and glory. That is to say, Jesus will come. He is God. He is everlasting. His words last forever. He's coming to take us to be with his father. In other words, we are not supposed to be afraid, okay? Jesus is saying that we should be prepared at all times. We should watch. We should be alert. That is, we should keep doing the good things he has asked us to do. And what are these things Jesus wants us to do? He wants us to keep helping our parents. He wants us to keep doing the chores we do at home. He wants us to keep obeying our elders, older ones. He wants us to keep sharing what we have. He wants us to keep praying. He wants us to keep studying the word of God. That's the Bible. He wants us to keep using kind words with people. He wants us to help people around us. He wants us to also ask for mercy those times we err, we do something wrong. We should ask people that we have hurt to forgive us, to pardon us. Jesus wants us to do all these good things. He doesn't want us to be afraid of any of this because of the way the readings are, that the skies are going to change, signs up in the sky, nations in opera, everybody wailing. No, he doesn't want us to be afraid. He's only saying that this thing's about to happen. After all, they already have Happening. If you ask me, I will say that we're in the end time because things are happening. There are wars, sicknesses, diseases, a whole lot of bad things happening. And that's why Jesus is saying we should not be dismayed. We shouldn't despair. We shouldn't uh, be afraid. We shouldn't give up. We shouldn't complain. Jesus wants us to keep looking up to him, to keep doing the good things we are meant to do. And then when he comes, he's going to take us. We will not be caught up in the wars of the world, okay? We'll not be caught up in the things happening in the world if we fix our eyes on him and keep doing the right things. That's what Jesus is saying, okay? So we shouldn't be afraid when we read this um, part of the scriptures, okay? But we, when we read the Luke chapter 21 or Ma, uh, Matthew chapter 24, we see a whole lot of scary things, but we're not supposed to be scared. We are supposed to um, wait on God in expectation that, well, Jesus, when you come, you're going to take us home to be with you. We're not going to be seeing these things happening, okay? So, children, we don't know when Jesus is going to come. Um, remember last Sunday, only God knows, okay? We do not know. So, we shouldn't even be asking, when is it coming? When is it coming? No. All we need to do is to do the right things that God has asked us to do. We keep the commandments and do our charity works, okay? Yes, and when he comes, he will take us. Okay, children? Yes, we shouldn't be afraid. Now, let's take our memory verse. Is verse 36, it's just that first part, and it says, Watch therefore and pray always, okay? Pray all the time, all the time. We should keep praying all the time. We need to be prepared. How do you get prepared? By ensuring that you do the good things you are meant to do, and then you keep praying, you keep studying the word of God. Okay, that's how we are meant to be prepared and watch. Okay, children? Okay. All right, let us pray. Position for prayer. Dear Father, we want to be living the life you ask us to live. And so prepare for your coming. Help us to do this. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We come to the end of today's Sunday School. Jesus loves you as always. He loves you and he cares for you. Till next Sunday, it is bye from Mrs. Aboro. Don't forget to share to a friend. Also like. <laughs> God bless you. Bye.